ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rigging to the Com video, let's talk about Ryzen 7, shall we? More specifically, the most baffling part of the launch, the motherboards. Now, I say baffling because while there was a fairly ample supply of the Ryzen 7 chips, and that goes through the entire three SKUs, that would be the 1700, 1700X, and finally the 1800X, it was nigh impossible to find a motherboard in some places. It was really difficult. Some parts of Europe really suffered. I've heard Australia, and, um, well, it just sucked, quite frankly. In fact, and I know I've said this story before, but I'll tell you it again. Basically, we ordered from Amazon uh, on the day of the pre-order, and they told us that we were going to get it, and then it was the day of uh, launch... It was like midnight and I still checked and it said it was coming tomorrow. And basically early in the morning, like 7, 8, 8 in, the, 8 in the morning, I got an update. My order actually updated at that time and told me, uh, yeah, kind of we're out of motherboards and processors. Especially the motherboards, they told me when I was speaking to the Amazon representative. And the other representative who I'd spoken to earlier who had assured me just that night, the, the last night, that, um, yeah, they basically lied and they were basically just hoping for the best, pretty much, that they were going to get the stock in. So, it was a bit of a weird situation, the Ryzen launch, and the motherboards are still not exactly common, particularly the X370s. Now, there are other issues with Ryzen, and I know I haven't really talked super amounts about it uh, with the Ryzen scheduler and other bits and bobs, simply because, to be honest with you, um, I've not really had the time to do the testing, and I don't want to just do it half-assed. The second reason is our motherboard is having some serious issues when it comes to running RAM at higher clock speeds, which we are not special snowflakes there. I know a couple of people personally who have issues with the Ryzen boards at higher clock speeds. And so there is a question, like, what is going on? Why is all of this happening? Well, a website by the name of Legit Reviews has some answers for us. Now I'm going to read out a message from John Taylor, who is the Corporate Vice President of Marketing over at AMD. AMD is pleased with the enthusiasm for Ryzen and strong demand worldwide for Ryzen 7. Demand for Ryzen 7 does exceed our motherboard's partners' initial expectations. Our partners are rapidly ramping up shipments, and we expect sufficient motherboard supply in just a few weeks. Okay, that's good, but it doesn't really answer anything, and it's a very PR-y message. And to be honest with you, it also doesn't explain too much about the BIOS issues. Okay, so... Uh, a motherboard manufacturer who these guys reached out to, uh, Legit Reviews, had responded back. Now, as a caveat, they are anonymous. They are not telling us who they are, which I don't really blame them. And I'm going to read out the quote. It is, All about bad coordination, communication, support, and timing to launch this platform, in my opinion. With all these issues, none of us could start manufacturing the board sooner. Also, in January, February, all board vendors' production lines were occupied with Intel 200 series boards before the Chinese New Year and tried to ship as many boards as we could to ensure we might have stock issues in Asia with on New Year vacation. In late December, AMD decided to pull the launch date it was scheduled to launch in late Q2 and launch it right after Chinese New Year, but AMD AMD was keeping the CPU supply quantity secret, because that's a good idea, right? From us the whole time. And they shared the data two weeks before the launch, and we didn't understand what they were doing it. Also, the BIOS team at Engineers were doing terrible jobs of supporting us in the BIOS microcode update, driver updates, CPU samplings for testing, and they've done nothing they should have to doing support to launch the platform partners, as well as delays and give no response to on report a support requests. We've been in huge issues to debug with limited AMD resource support, including validating parts, fixing memory speeds, and that is all limited by AMD. In my opinion, it's been too long since AMD have launched a new CPU, so they just forgot how to do it. So they have launched a CPU, just like they're launching a graphics card. They didn't care about the platform ecosystem, so the ecosystem is suffering and stock is delayed. And we have flying in new batches every three days to fulfill the back orders as soon as possible. So they should all be back in soon with the board reviews released per egg, per new egg and Amazon and AMD memory and the limitation is slowing down the sales load. Um, we need your help to feedback that AMD is well on their support issues. End quote. Okay. So that is one motherboard vendor, and obviously they are very much passing the buck, which is, I'm going to assume, one of the reasons they're being anonymous. With all of that said, 
I can't say it's AMD's fault because, well, no one's really talking. Um, I do feel, however, and this is something I've said to friends, and I believe I've said it a couple of times on video, that the launch should have been postponed. Now, I understand why AMD did it. It was very much a, hey, look, um, Intel's Kaby Lake is out. Let's push it in front so we've got a nice lead-in. The press is going crazy. People are going crazy. Let's capitalize on that before people start getting a bit bored, talking about Ryzen. It's, you know, they just basically wanted to capitalize in. And obviously, you know, their stocks and all of that jazz. However, I do feel that this platform could have required... Well, did require, not could have, did require a little bit more time in the oven. That said, I don't regret buying it. Now, I want to stress that word, buy. I have bought Ryzen. I have not gotten a review sample. I have not, you know, got a review sample motherboard. I have bought it. In fact, another motherboard vendor, and I can tell you this from my own experience, another motherboard vendor who I won't name because there'd be, you know, I, I don't I don't know whether it's a confidential email, so I won't name them. But um, you can probably work out who it is if you watch the channel enough. But they have told me that they have not got any review samples available in the UK. They have a few in the US, and they are basically gold dust. Um, and I've asked them because essentially the Asus board we have just is just not playing ball with the memory speeds, and uh, it's just a bit of a mess. Now, with the Ryzen 7 scheduler, one of the problems is Windows is basically detecting it as a 4 plus a 4 core. And not only that, it's detecting it with just odd amounts of uh, cache, which we've already been through before, so I don't want to tread over old ground. Now, I'm not blaming AMD for this exclusively. I, I think that this has just been a culmination of issues. I think some of it is bad timing. I think some of it, quite frankly, is the fact that... Um, the driver teams haven't been quite where they should be, and I'm not necessarily talking about um, AMD's driver teams either. Like some of this is definitely Windows orientated. We don't know whether it's the motherboard vendors and how pushy they've been, like what levels of optimization they are doing internally, because we don't exactly know how the BIOSes work with Ryzen 7. And quite frankly, it's just a bit weird. Now, if you are thinking of buying Ryzen, and you're thinking, well, gee, I'm just put off. I, You know what? I would say to you, wait a couple of weeks. Wait, you know, two or three, maybe four weeks. And you're probably going to see the BIOS updates happen. And don't worry about it. If you already have Ryzen and you're pissed off, I would say to you, look, the bottom line is it's going to be fixed. It will be. None of this is the hardware. And what by which I mean the motherboards are not screwed up. There is not, you know, a trace incorrect in the motherboard. At least as far as we know, there is no, like, you know, the SATA ports explode if you happen to plug it into the wrong port. Or, you know, it blows up your PSU and, you know, it, it's nothing like that. It's essentially just issues with the BIOS and the drivers. These are software-related problems and because they're software-related, they can be fixed. Because they can be fixed, I'm willing to give the teams the benefit of the doubt and I'm sure that they are probably working until the wee hours of the morning. I know that's not really a um, comfort to you, perhaps, but it is what it is. Now, what I do feel that this is going to do is give a lesson. And I had said, and I'm not trying to preach the choir here, but I had said to you that, look, if you're uncertain about buying Ryzen, wait. And I don't just say that for AMD, because it's AMD. I believe that for every product, especially when it's expensive. Like, if you're going to go out and buy, like, you know, um, I can't think of an example, but, you know, something that's pretty cheap, you know, like a, uh, a, 20, a 20 pounds or a 30 dollar MP3 player, who cares? Like, if it's balked in six months, okay, you're not going to be happy, but you're not going to be really upset. On the other hand, let's say NVIDIA, when they released the GTX 1080 tie, like, there was no way in hell I would advise people to pre-order the card, like, way beforehand. Same thing with Vega. Don't buy it until you get reviews. Same thing with the new Kaby Lake. There were issues with it when it was launched. The voltages were going crazy. It was putting too much energy through the through the CPU, and it was causing the processor basically to run too hot. Like, it was that simple. Um, and I know this because... Uh, we got a review sample, which we had to send back, but we're getting another one, and then a reviewer's guide that said, yeah, make sure you've got the latest BIOS. It's fair enough. Like, that's fair. Um, so I'm not, 
like preaching to the choir here where I'm not trying to defend AMD and I'm not trying to defend anyone. I'm just trying to give you the situation. I would say that it's basically just a perfect storm. And I don't like to use that phrase, but it is what it is. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So if you've already bought Ryzen, if you've sold off your old hardware, whatever you've done, don't worry about it. Eventually, you know, in the next couple of weeks, probably we'll see an update and it probably will drastically improve performance. It seems that Ryzen does have quite a bit left in the tank. And quite frankly, I didn't think a new platform would go 100% smooth. I expected issues. I did. Um, I've said this story before, but back in the days of... Uh, Sandy Bridge, like, you know, my SATA controller just died, and I wasn't the only one. It was a pretty common problem on those particular motherboards. It just was. It, like, you know, the first batch, you could R you could RMA them, and it, I just didn't bother. And these are problems which are pretty consistent with large launches, like the Xbox 360. Remember the Red Ring of Death? This is nowhere near that bad. So it just kind of is what it is. If you're an early adopter, you've got to wait for the driver updates and to be honest, even the same with graphics cards. You know, you buy a graphics card and the performance isn't necessarily as good as it is a couple of weeks later. Or a couple of months later, because obviously the drivers didn't mature, they get better, performance goes up, and also the price goes down. So if you're an early adopter, you've got the stress of, well, being an early adopter, and you've got the, the, the tax for it, if you will. Anyway, um, this is just one motherboard vendor. So if we spoke to another one, I don't know who this is, so let's just call them, you know, John's Computers. If we spoke to Jill's Computers, she might say, hey, AMD have been really good. Unfortunately, you know, it's just, I don't know, I can't think of an example, but yeah, you get the idea. But we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video, my friends. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, and all of that jazz, if you have not already. There will be so much content coming up on the channel. It's one of the reasons we've been a bit quiet, actually, on the channel, is because we're figuring some stuff out. And to be honest with you, we're going to be changing up a lot of stuff. I don't want to say too much more, but hopefully you will enjoy the upcoming content. Take care of yourselves. Really, have a good day. Bye for now.